Everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm here today with Shafina. Hello. Hello, everyone. Another brand new Office Apps and Services MVP. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So why don't you introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, where you are. Absolutely. So first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, like he said, my name is Shafina. Uh, recently awarded the MVP uh, award. Uh, but you know, prior to that, I've been working in the industry, specifically around SharePoint and Microsoft Teams uh, over the last 12 years, I would say. So really heavily focused on SharePoint in terms of collaboration and productivity. And uh, so then I just naturally moved into this Microsoft Teams ecosystem uh, as my clients' needs evolved. And I found myself really enjoying um, working with my clients to help them understand how to enable end users to be really productive and more collaborative with the tools and technology. So that's kind of how I found my passion. And that's when I really started sharing things with the community was when I was realizing that actually I really enjoy helping end users and just empowering people to, to do more. That sounds so Microsoft. Well, that's, that is, uh, so you, that's my sweet spot as well. I, I, that aspect of it. And one thing too, is you can have a number of us that are out there. Like I see some of the sessions that you're doing around like, you know, Microsoft Teams hacks and Microsoft 365 hacks. Like I do the same thing. I've got an ebook I'm pushing right now that has kind of 20 Teams hacks and, and things that are out there, but it's so large and so complex. And there are different approaches to some of these common problems or, or tips, hints and tips that are out there there's plenty of room for a lot of us that are out there doing similar kind of stuff and people love that kind of content right yeah you, you know it, it's it's really uh rewarding when you're able to give someone that aha moment and that aha moment can come from so many different tips and tricks just based on you know their needs in their everyday jobs so it's really it's really cool to see yeah yeah, there's a, a session that I do where I go through and do just you know top 20 productivity tips. And I've done a variation of that starting back in the SharePoint days. I'd say, you know, I, I, so I had a session that I called like top 10 SharePoint tips that you've never used, uh, you know, kind of things. And I've had something like 600,000 views of just that variations of that presentation. But I think the largest one had like, I don't know, 400, 500,000, you know, views of just that first version. Of that. But anyway, uh, what, you know, people go through that session and their feedback, it's always the same. There's like, they're sitting there. It's like, I heard of this. I know this, I know this. And then number seven, they're like, oh my gosh, I've never heard of that thing. And like, and I get then emails back or, or Twitter, you know, messages like that tip changed my life. Like that, I, that was a problem that I had Change. Mm -hmm changing people's lives that's what we do <laughs> every day <laughs> and then you know and that's exactly why i decided you know uh, what better way than to change more people's lives and share with the community so that's know, really why i, I engage with the community. doctors people that work in the front lines you know and those that do hints and tips i know it's <laughs> it's actually a lot more interesting than uh, measuring someone's blood pressure I don't know. That can be pretty fascinating if you look at it you know, <laughs> over time, but that's exciting. So, so what are the, some of the things that you've been uh, doing? What, what kind of led you into the, the path of becoming an MVP? Yeah, it's a really great story. So I was actually brought on to roll out Office 365 to an organization in Canada. So a crown corporation of the government of Canada. <clears throat> and I really started focusing on the change management aspect of it. I had received my change management certification. I also have a background in marketing and uh, I happened to be partnered with a fellow MVP, Joanne Klein. And so she was also on this rollout project alongside myself. And, uh, you know, we just found that we learned so much from each other throughout that project. And uh, she just really started to push me to think about how I can share my knowledge with others. And prior to that, I really didn't understand that you could share this knowledge with others. 
it wasn't something I was really exposed to as much, but Joanne really kind of made me understand the importance of this. She mentored me through it. Um, and then along the way, I met other MVPs uh, in Canada. So Nurez and uh, Simran and uh, Habib, just the fellow Canadian MVPs. And we would meet each other at these specific user group sessions. And I just really fell in love with the community. So I have to say that every year, uh, you know, when we were doing the in-person MVP summits, um, there were uh, always complaints that you know, why do the Canadian MVPs always have like the matching jackets and they're always seem to be taking pictures together. And so there's just great camaraderie around that. I wish I, you know, and there's so many, you know, MVPs in the U S it's impossible. One Microsoft will not fund to go buy us all matching jackets, you know, for that, but you know, uh, it, it's, it's great to go and find other people and for, and for folks, maybe advice for people that are interested in becoming an MVP, you know, like you're the point that you made about sharing that information out. I mean, I, I've been in industry long enough to remember when it was, we didn't talk about it so much, but hoarding of data of information was kind of power. That's how job security. I mean, that was just part of the way you worked within IT is you kind of hoarded that and you became set yourself self up as being that go to person for those problems or that bit of knowledge. And it's completely flipped where the power comes from those that are more open to learning and sharing what they're doing and, and connecting people with ideas and saying, I don't know, but let's go find out. It's just exactly. a different approach. It's it's such a different approach. And yeah, that hoarding, that feeling of hoarding, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's been with us since our high school days when that person wants to copy off your, your notes. But, you know, as you work and you collaborate more and actually work together as people in the community with a common goal, I find that you are actually more knowledgeable at the end of it. And you've created these connections you've built a network and you're actually ultimately benefiting your clients at the end of the day so i mean it's a win-win for pretty much everyone i see well that's the thing too is that go and leverage the knowledge of others and, and even if you you are validating that you perfectly deployed the technology and did everything exactly right somebody else can benefit from that knowledge that experience but i would guess that that there's always something in every project, there's always something that goes amiss and being able to turn to and leverage and say, hey, what are your thoughts? This is what I experienced. This is the barrier that I ran into and getting those multiple perspectives. It's just, I guess it's better than doing it alone and trying to figure that stuff out. I completely agree. I completely, uh, yeah. First-hand experience. Yep. Um, so highly recommend it for any of those who are thinking about sharing with the community. You know, my advice, honestly, is just find something that that you're really passionate about when you're talking to someone. You know, find that topic that really motivates you to learn more and and share oh. your learnings with others. It's um, you'll see it just comes naturally then, and you don't have to think about it. It's not work. It shouldn't be work. And that's another thing too. I always make this point when I talk to MVPs is that we would, I'm sure you would agree with this or, or disagree if you, had, but we would be doing this whether or not we had the MVP. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. So this has just become part of my personality. If I learn something, I want to write about it, share about it. It's not a, Hey, look at me. It's a, Hey, I learned this thing. This is really cool. Put it out there in case somebody else can find that useful. Yeah, that's right. So Christian, I know this is all about me, yeah. but you know, I, I want to hear from someone with a lot of experience. Why don't you give me some advice as I embark on this new journey? Well, uh, I, as I like to answer every question, um, it depends. No, I <laughs> that's like the answer to all <laughs> things. Consultant. Teams, I consultant. I know, consultant answer. <laughs> um, no, I think it's, it's, it, it's, it, you know, it's funny. So I have uh, four adult children and going in four different directions and, you know, career wise and things that they're doing. And I've advised all of them kind of the same way. I said, you know, look, if, well, here's a great example. My middle son, I've got a daughter and then three boys and my middle son, he's going into atmospheric sciences. So he's a, uh, I think he's officially a senior now at the university of Utah and, very smart boy and, and doing great. But I've been telling him for years since high school 
I said, start blogging, start documenting your journey. And he said, well, I'm not an expert on that. I'm like, no, you're not. Don't claim to be an expert, but share your process of learning. I said, seriously, if you do that for, at the very least, the four years of college and a blog post a week on the topics that interest you and your journey as you learn, at the end of that four-year process, you'll have your degree. You'll also have this collection of content kind of showing your path along that way. It'll open up conversations. It'll help you get better at writing for doing, like he wants to go on to master's, potentially his doctorate, you know, that going on that path. But the network that you'll build, the process in your own mind to work through different topics, um, as well as collecting a library of knowledge that you'll be able to go back to and access for future projects. So that's my advice for somebody that's a new MVP or for somebody who's looking to become an MVP is start cataloging, documenting your knowledge and what you want to share. You never know what it is that you've been through, the experiences that you had, the knowledge that you've captured, um, how that could help other people within that process. Absolutely. You know, you're so right. Even though I'm at this point where I'm starting this journey uh, along the MVP route, I still think there's so much value in me documenting and, and just keeping that diary, something that, you know, something could come out of it, you don't know, but at the very least, something for me to refer back to and, and just see my journey and see how I've evolved and, you know, obviously make myself better along the way. One of the things that I do, so I, I live and breathe inside of OneNote. It's always open. I'm working it, capture all my notes. But every blog, every article, everything that I've ever written, every presentation, outline, I catalog it. When I'm done with it, when it's a published article or whatever, then I will, if I, when I remember, I'll put the URL to the published link. So CMS Wire or, or wherever it's published, you know, my company blog, my personal blog, I'll put the link in it and then I'll archive that page. And I've created a, folder for that. The benefit to that is that when I'm going and researching a topic for a new article or a project, or there's a customer question, one of the first places I will do a search is in my own archives. I've forgotten so many cool things, <laughs> <laughs> but there's so much knowledge that's out there, but it comes from that catalog. And so I'm able to go back through and, and I'll, I'll see some of my notes and links to other articles as I was putting together that content. So it's become a tremendous and much more accurate or relevant content than just doing like a Google search or yeah. Bing search. <laughs> so you're saying your OneNote is like Buckley's search. That's that's my yeah my you know BuckleySearch.com. Yeah. Buckley, yeah. <laughs> right. So what, what else? Open are... that up for everyone to access. No, no, oh, that, that's where somewhere. I'm. I think it's a valid thing for me to hoard from a security. <laughs> So Shavina, so what, from the technology standpoint, kind of what are you passionate about right now? What, what are you excited about seeing that Microsoft, of course, NDA in place. So talk about only those things which are public. <laughs> yeah, I got to be really careful here. Um, oh, no, God. honestly, I just, I'm really excited about the Teams platform. So five years ago when I started out with Microsoft Teams, I was so excited to introduce it to uh, users and uh, you know anyone that I could talk to about it. But now I'm actually even more excited. And I would definitely like to thank the pandemic because the pandemic not only pushed Microsoft to uh, push thank features you, out. COVID. Hey, no one <laughs> talks about the benefits of COVID. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks to COVID, Microsoft has been just churning the features out um, and people are just adopting them on a daily basis. There's just new things that they're finding out on a daily basis. And I find the users that I'm working with now um, are less against the change and they're more willing to accept the change. They're more willing to accept that these are new tools and uh, new features and I just need to learn them because Something about the pandemic changed the, the way that people perceive learning. So well, it's well, been really forced the, right. It forced the change. It, you had no other choice but to learn that. I mean, because so I mean, so you've been certified change management is a you know, big topic. And my background is project management. And so change management is part of my history before entering the, the SharePoint world. Uh, and people have a difficult time with change management. And I would often say organizations that are good at change 
that change management will surpass, you know, in learning and IP creation companies that are not. So Absolutely. it's a competitive advantage. Yes. So have you found that organizations are better at it because of the last year and a half? Are better at change management? Yes. I have not seen that. Okay. Uh, there may be instances of organizations who have been able to do that more efficiently or effectively. But I do think that the inability for organizations to set up events and uh, certain types of, uh, you know, engagement, communication engagement initiatives are lacking with the virtual world. So in terms of actual change management, I'm not sure if the pandemic has really helped, but what it has helped is uh, the users and the user's willingness to accept change, which was a really big barrier prior that, to the pandemic. Well, I mean, that's, that's a big problem with change management is unwilling users. So if yes. users are, are recognizing, hey, we need to more rapidly change around that. I, my, one of the things that I would always write about and talk about is that, well, one of the problems with change and why so many end users were reluctant to change is because they were never included in the reasoning for why we're changing. They weren't Absolutely. part of that discussion. And so that's another part of being open of, of uh, you know, the working out loud model mm -hmm. of being very transparent in the decisions that we make about our technology with the end users, with the people that actually use the technology. Yeah, it, exactly. What a crazy idea. <laughs> yeah, you know, that the why is very rarely communicated, right? It's just, oh, hey guys, guess what? We're going live, make sure to do this and this and this by this date. And the users are like, uh, archive, <laughs> <They know how. laughs> but um, totally, if they understand, you know, why this is important to the business, what their role is and, you know, how they can actually make this a success, they are more willing to adopt and learn. So it's a right. really big challenge for sure. But, you know, being virtual, I noticed it's been like, yeah, everyone's willing to learn and adopt these new tools and technologies. But I also notice that people are, uh, you know, being more um, autonomous in their learning. They're not depending on their organizations to provide learning and opportunities to engage and figure things out. They're actually using external sources on their own to go and figure figure things out, whatever it is, whether they need to learn a new tool or whether they need to communicate with someone or collaborate with another community, people are actually reaching out and doing that. So it's been really nice. Yeah, that is great. It, it's, uh, well, I, w and we'll see how much of this change of what's the, what's improved because of the hardships that we've all been through will, will stick going forward as we come out of this uh, I, I, all the positive things I hope organizations hold on to and don't just relapse back into the way that they were doing it. They take advantage of this. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm not going to comment, uh, but hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. Hope for the yeah. 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 Well, Shafina, we'll really appreciate your time today. For folks that want to find out more about you or get in touch with you, what are the best ways to reach you? Honestly, the best way is LinkedIn. Uh, that's probably my favorite platform to engage with the community. But also, you can find me on Twitter at Shafina. Um, and, you know, look out for me, look out for my posts at user groups or conferences where I'll have the opportunity to speak and share more of my knowledge. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time and we'll, uh, we'll catch you soon. Thank you so much. And thanks for tuning in. Wow.